fear God or gods. It is with satisfaction and solely out of catharsis that I bother to waste my time writing to you. Nothing I say will likely surprise you. However, I feel compelled to speak, as you are responsible for how my mind works, if you are real at all. First, it is impossible to believe that you are, in any sense, a benevolent being. I would not be alive if you had intervened and prevented the violation and torture of my ancestors, rather than sit idle while countless people successfully spoke on your behalf to justify their cruelty. I am, therefore, living proof that you are either incapable of, or unwilling to, act in any manner befitting a loving God. Second, you allow millions in this country, a nation that most hypocritically proclaims equality while dependent on slavery, to remain willfully ignorant of how grotesque you are, singing praises about you as they ignore the origins of my existence. They call life a gift, while you so callously gave me life as if I were a burden to them. The African-American human being is either the result of neglected and persecuted mixed-race couples, or, more commonly, the walking shadow of generations of abuse and misery. Third, a sizable portion of the progeny of my ancestors' captors are, on your watch, so naive as to be disgusted with the sight of me, as if I chose to insult them by breathing around them. Strangely, their disgust is never directed at those within their bloodline who were responsible for creating my own. They're never insulted by their family legacy of human trafficking and slaughter. They think that we as black people were somehow destined to be unintelligent, unnecessary, or evil. And make no mistake about it, they must believe this lie. They must see their family's history as sacred. And they must be taught that mine is merely centuries of mindless bloodshed and pain. You let them hate me. Because evidently, your grand plan needed them to hate themselves under the surface for being the product of their ill-gotten privilege. And then there's the matter of the children who suffer. Even if you rescued the privileged from self-hatred, you still allow our children to endure misery and terror. Why would a loving or even a competent deity create a living creature only to last a few years and die of cancer? How could a single-digit lifespan be ravaged by sickness and pain in parts of the world where warlords partner with Western corporations to bankrupt entire societies so they never get adequate health care. How could any being, any living being, sit with folded arms and watch a child's innocence robbed from them by the very people that being allows to speak on its behalf. What praise, O holy God, or gods, do you deserve for witnessing the trauma of hundreds of millions without giving a whisper of wisdom between them? You can enter the heart of anyone and speak goodness. You can guide them. You can speak in any voice and warn the victim or even incapacitate the aggressor. You can do all these things. And finally, there is the bondage that you have created that is far worse than any jail or slavery. The kind of trauma that doesn't even require an abuser to be present. 
You smile at this creation of yours that warps the minds of your people. You smile even when that person is chronically tormented with delusions, hallucinations, a host of unspeakable forms of disorientation and despair. You have created people sick, incapable of being well. Even if the world were benevolent and compassionate, atoning for past wrongs, you would still continue to let people not only struggle to live, but also to be aware that they cannot be helped. The mind does not simply adapt and accept these maladies. It translates them into distress, debilitation, and even death when the physical pain from these ailments prevents even the most basic of vital activities. But you, you watch mental illness, you watch the suffering and smile. You smile on your creation. You smile as they cause their loved ones to suffer with them. You smile as you wait for them to die, perhaps so you can judge them after the sweet release of death, only to realize that the almighty abuser has only begun to hurt them. You smile at your creation. You are without redemption, however. You are the demon hidden in our wilderness. You are the captor. You are the sadist. You are the ultimate source of cosmic brutality. If you are there, I hate you, God. And the worst thing of all about you is this. Despite being powerful or wise or just old enough to know anything, you don't let anyone know you're even there. Not believe you're there. Know you're there. You couldn't be bothered to face the dozens of billions of souls you allegedly designed. You couldn't even let us have closure. And you knew we need it. You know we need answers to have a catharsis. You know we need to write messages like this one. Yet you made sure we'd never know where to send them. We humans, all humans, are proof that you, if you somehow can see this, load the the side of us, as if it were our fault that we exist, as if it's our fault that we're abused, our fault that we are hopelessly sick and broken. No, sir or madam, whatever you may or may not be, we are not to blame. I will not die on the altar of shame to cleanse you of your sins. But if we should meet when I die, and if you even have a word of condemnation awaiting me, I will treat you with the same cold silence you gave the rest of us, knowing that I've already said my piece. And I will be the one who is smiling. Yours with eternal contempt, the Black Apostate.